people have a shaykh, hold tight to your shaykh. Don't, don't confuse yourself with multiple people. Whoever your shaykh is, just hold tight to him because if things get confusing and fitna and difficulties and testing come, you're gonna get shaken around. So just hold on tight to your shaykh, say, this is my shaykh, that's it, that's all you have to look. Don't look left, don't look right, don't post left, don't post right. Focus on your shaykh and hold tight. Because confusion comes, difficulty comes like a tornado. We've described many times when tornadoes begin to open means calamities, difficulties, craziness, people will be lost in storms. And that which you're tied onto like a big huge tree that rooted deep in realities, you chain yourself to that tree and hold on. In the midst of confusion and internet uh, postings and all sorts of craziness, if you begin to take your chain and wander around, maybe him, maybe this, maybe that, you will be lost in the wind. And that's why they, they fortify everything and certify that, you know, participate, links, send this, send that, give to the charities, do your khidmat, look onto the teachings. Look yourself and close everything else, you don't have to worry about anything else. If you pass all of these realities and you think somebody else is out there to take you higher then good luck. But if you didn't then master all that's being taught, even just tonight to contemplate and think you understood it, did you taste it, did you feel it, you reach to that reality? If not that's your life's journey, you don't need anything else, you don't even need another meal, that is a, that's, a, that's enough of a meal to accomplish in life so that you can feel already everything is calm and perfected. You just have to reach towards that because fitna comes and nobody's spared from fitna. Tariqah fitna is something that people can't even imagine, all our life we had that. That it just goes all over the place, every, every, every sort of person begin to open their mouth and, and talking from the shadows. And remember the story of the shadows. It, most of the world is about shadow interpretation and very few, very few talk about this world of light that they've been set out and, and set free into. And the shadow people they don't like those discussions, they want to get the chain and, and to silence those who talk from the world of light, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. There's no questions out there? Can you hear me, Sayyidi? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, I can. Okay. As salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa See, there are rumors of Dajjal beginning to take on his physical form. Is there any truth to this? Yeah, we, I think we talked the night before that they say he's here. They said that they're the one whom they're looking for is here. Uh, we call Dajjal, they call by something else. So for us the concept of Dajjal means that the, a great deceit is opening upon this earth. And that deception and deception by its very name is very clear, it means Allah makes everything clear. Thought of a saw wait for the clock. As soon as the clock appeared they said, no this is more complicated than nor n n normal. So what do you mean it's complicated? Allah said, wait for the clock and I went for Hajj, I saw the clock. It's clear why they made a clock when Allah said, wait for the clock, iqtarab as-sa'ah. So everything they want to make complicated, 
They say, he's here. If they say, he's here, they want now to go to war and to make something, make a temple. If they're going to start their wars then that means whatever was destined is going to start. When that starts, always remember this world is a veiled world and that's what we talked. When you look at your shaykh, you say, I saw my shaykh, you didn't see your shaykh. You have no understanding what the image of the shaykh looks like. Does it have wings? How many wings? What kind of light does the shaykh have? Don't think he's in a physical form. You haven't seen the angels, people haven't seen the, the angel of death, what the angel of Jahannam and Sayyidina Malik and Zabani. So we haven't seen any of those, we heard of them. So it means the whole world of form is veiled. So the one who brings deception may, may be deceiving to look very nice. Very calm, very sort of peaceful. But the, the deeds are important, the actions are important, not what people say. So when we look to the deeds and actions of men is what's important. So what did they do? What did the deeds of these people do? What type of deception do they do? What type of enslavement do they do? That's what's important. When somebody's deeds and actions are good, you look to their deeds and actions. So this one, why he teaches like this? Why he only teaches these realities? Look, they put 1,000 wells. I don't know if our guys are following on the internet, our, our progress report just for Pakistan. This not including India, not including Kenya, not including Vancouver. All of these reports will be posted of how many thousands of pounds have been put out and Los Angeles, Chicago. In just Pakistan alone 1,000 wells in this year are coming out. These are the deeds and actions of the shaykh and his jama'ah. If the jama'ah were just people meditating and hallucinating, well mashaAllah you did a lot of great deeds. Our people came together and did these deeds. Over 1,000 orphans were, were given supplies and food and, and, and dealt with. 1500 different individuals were given hot meals and, and food supplies. Over 2000 pounds, I think it's a lot more than 2000 because we had only just 100 qurbanis just last uh, for Imam Hussain Then on monthly groceries they gave 36,000 pounds of food away this year. For the pediatric hospital we reached out to 500 children were given supplies and, and, and treated in the pediatric hospitals. The winter clothing drive served over 1,000 individuals. Flood relief was 500 families where Dr. Omar, Shaykh Omar went there and actually opened a clinic and helped people and two of these gentlemen are doctors, three with a sister there on over 1,000 water wells. That's Pakistan alone. So if anyone wants to know what's the fruits of this teaching, it's not the utterances of a madman talking about the world of light, but this teaching and this love and this ishq, they affect the hearts of people. They draw them near to the love of Prophet the love of Allah and as a result they're inspired to achieve amazing things. That by their support, their willingness, their wanting, look how many thousands of people are being touched by this. And again the report hasn't come out for India, for Kenya, for all of Los Angeles, for Chicago, for Vancouver, all of these people coming and doing this for what? Because the teaching affected their love, affected their sincerity, their ishq and love for Allah and His Rasul So the proof is in the actions. Not the men who sit and don't do nothing, walk around and pretend they own everything. So the proof is in the pudding. Magic show. So pay attention to deceit. As alaikum Sayyidi Wa alaikum as salaam wa rahmatullah Can you speak a little bit more about the, the Muhammadan government? Muhammadan government? 
Yeah, that that I have to read from that one. I, I can't speak to that by heart. It's a the understanding of the Muhammadan government and tariqah is different. That Prophet has a government, a king, he has a kutub, which is the the, the Ghaus, the head of all awliyaullah, the kutubs that are below the, the Ghaus and a whole structure of saints that Allah has provided for Prophet 124,000 awliyaullah and the different ranks and different realities and the, and the different obligations of these awliya. And this is the Muhammadan government and the sultanate of which is Sayyidina Muhammad and that in the spiritual position and rank of the king, the sitting qawf is a position. It's not that only one person was the qawf and there's no more qawf, this, the seat of that king has to always be filled. Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jailani Qaddi siru was a qawf, not the qawf because as soon as they live they occupy that position. When they retire means they, the physicality is no longer on this earth. Their spiritual support is all supporting for the one now who lives and has to represent in the world of form that authority. So all the Qawth from the past have to support the sitting Qawth and that that Qawth faces Prophet for every action and every interaction and every command. Then the Imams and the Qutubs below are waiting for commands from the Qawth. And then again from those kutubs they have then their structure and the, and those are from jinn, budal, nujab, niqab, awtad, wal akhyar where jinn were malaika, these categories of beings all serve in those positions to fulfill the commands of the heavens. So that structure has nothing to do with tariqah structures. So you cannot take a tariqah person and say that now this person is the Sultan al awliya, that's completely incorrect. And that this tariqah, oh, this one is now the, the kutub al or this and this kutub of that, that, that has nothing to do with it. All of the Muhammadan kingdom and those in the Muhammadan government, they're all ahlul dhikr. So they could be sitting in a dhikr and not commanding it. And they can have a very high tie position in the Muhammadan government. So the two are not related but you'll find that all of the 124,000 are the people of dhikr. They're sitting in a zikr, they're doing zikr, the people have ishq and love and muhabbat. But not all the people whom are running tariqah, somebody say, okay all oh, this shaykh is the shaykh of the head of the Tijani's this and they say, he's a Qaus and then this one is the shaykh of this, he's the Qaus. Everyone thinking their shaykh is the Qaus because this is the adab to think that your shaykh is the highest. The two are separate entities. So there are many, many high-ranking Muhammadan awliya that they would not even be known in the zikr. They sit quietly in the side and they're doing their zikr because they're ahlul dhikr. But their spiritual ability and the, the, the king of the, the abdal, the one sultan of the abdal, he was giving water in the masjid and teaching hadith and people those who faqir and a, and, a, and a kind and saintly person. But he was the Imam of all Abda, but they don't show themselves. So the two are always confusing for people thinking, oh, the head of this tariqah now is the Qawus. No, that has no, no relationship at all, and that's not true. And many of these awliyaullah, high ranking awliyaullah, they are hidden. So these are, these are different. But the main thing is to study the reality, make the connection, and make your meditation, and, and to connect your heart with your shaykh. So that you can reach to your safety, to reach to these knowledges, to reach to these lights and to these realities. And those whom are inspired in this type of talk, with this type of language, it serves its purpose. Those whom are inspired to listen to something in Chinese, well then that serves its purpose. So it's not one flavour for all but whomever Allah inspired for them to want to listen and to be attracted to that style of teaching. Then they lock on and hold on and close your eyes. InshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa In regards to your, the talk about the greater soul, 
Would the greater soul send the light gradually based on the servant's spiritual progress? Definitely. That the, the whole thing, if, if we can understand like we, we described of the video games and that every game these children are so mesmerized because there's something deep of our reality in that game. Thinking that you're controlling this avatar and that you understood early in gaming you have to complete all the levels. If you don't get the potion on level one, by level three you needed it. Everything you need to achieve you need on that higher level. You go, oh, I got through this area easy and I just avoided all those. You can't avoid those. Those potions and this and that you needed that for level three because what's coming after you in level three you don't have anything and you get killed and brought back down. So the, the spiritual game is the same. The soul is playing your physicality and trying to keep you connected and then shaitan is induced to the game and keeps making your avatar go off course. You're distracted, you're distracted by many things and usually it's of the lower desire. When the lower desire comes the servant is being pulled away by shaitan and as a result is no longer communicating with the higher conscious. It's trying to say, turn right, do this, do that, do the awrah, do these things. You're going to need this power for the next level. If they're not listening, imagine next level they get smashed and then comes difficulty in their life to try to bring them back on course because what you were supposed to have built you're not prepared for. So it's very logical, you were supposed to do the awrahs, the practices, the giving and all these things and the next level of testing comes you walk out the door there's supposed to be a calamity. So they emailed an example, we have thousands like that, that before they walked out of the house they were inspired, they gave a donation, they did some stuff and they went and lo and behold they got a notice that, oh there was a calamity just minutes before on the way going to work and we were saved from that calamity. But the one who's not listening to their guidance those things are still coming. So the higher soul is telling them, do this, do that, do like this, do like that, they don't listen, boom something happens and the calamity came. And they didn't listen to inspiration, they weren't inspired to give something to lessen that difficulty to even stall them from reaching that difficulty. So whatever's written is written to come to the servant but Allah gives them also these sort of escape clauses, if you do these things they will be lessening your difficulty. Sadaqah lessens calamities, zakat lessens these things, salawats and, and nasheeds and, and service and khidmat, they lessen all of these different hardships, battles and, and, and distress, all the things that happen to us on a daily basis in our lives. And that's the remedies that Prophet gave to us. So of course the soul, the higher conscious is continuously trying to tell us, do this, do that, we don't listen. And as a res then we described as a result it has these two buttons, depression and anxiety. It begins to press anxiety in which the body is now worried on earth, continuously worried, I don't know why I'm worried, I'm worried because you're not listening to something. You're not meditating on something, you're not trying to get the signal that, that they're sending from above in the game. And when the person sits and meditates it has an immense power. So people who negate meditation is, uh, is just against Islam. Anyone who negates meditation is against Islam. The Prophet meditated. It was in his state of meditation that the command of Iqra came. It wasn't in the market, it wasn't in the bazaar, it wasn't herding sheep where the angel came and said, Iqra, but it was in a state of contemplation in which Prophet continuously retreated from the city, from people. And as a result of the retreat he set the example from us, if you're waiting for a message from the heavens it doesn't happen while you're amongst people, that go and retreat and isolate yourself and the command Iqra came. So Prophet is sets the path and every Prophet of the Divine set that path that you have to communicate. Why? To get the signal from the higher conscience that it wants to send the command and the coordinates. They said the one who meditates and we talked about in those energies that when they meditate and truly reach their waveform they can begin to affect not themselves only but others. 
So if you follow tariqah you don't understand how the shaykhs before, how they had so much faiz and blessings. I, we're explaining it on these theories, the same theories they don't like to hear. What's this energy talk? Uh, because the, the science is teaching you. These great shaykhs they reached a waveform that is unimaginable and you could sit and see them but they had control of their wave. And when they had control of their wave and if you're open hearted you could see, you could see the shaykh Nazim would come out and had a hook and he would put a hook onto your light and immediately you began to feel these fires and these energies. When they see it with their heart, they're not blind people to see what the shaykhs were doing, they were seeing the energies that the shaykhs were using with their wave reality reaching. And their wave reality has no limit, that same wave reality reaches into the seven heavens within the, the blink of their thought. They merely think to be with Prophet and their wave reality is sitting in that presence receiving the fires that dresses them and dresses all those whom are connected to them through their bayat. Because the bayat is like an umbilical cord that locks you onto them to receive their fires. Whatever the shaykh's fires and dresses is then going to those whom been dressed by that reality. So that, that wave is moving faster than the speed of thought. And by that means the shaykhs had a blessing. If you can't explain that and you say, no the shaykh just had a blessing, that's all, don't talk about anything else. No, well, we are capable of explaining the reality of how that fires is moving and how the, the reality of fires was open. And that's with the study of the duality of light. And those who don't contemplate they stay as a particle and they can do nothing. And then that's what you see on dunya, right? Who are these influencers? They are the extreme particle. They sold their right to their wave reality and as a result only their particle exists on earth. So that's the sadness that people give up their right to their wave reality. When it's the wave reality that is eternal and illuminates everything. Imagine the one who opened their wave reality, the grave cannot contain them. The grave actually is, is, the, is their great benefit for them because then they can finally get rid of the physical body that is slowing them down. But the one who sold away his rights to his wave has nothing but the a bliss in the grave because you sold away your right to become a wave. You took the life of a particle and all that will enter into the grave is just darkness. So that's, that's the, the, the difficulty but the one who went into wave form, the grave does not confine them at all, they're much more powerful in the grave because their wave is moving everywhere, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Sayyidi, can one achieve their greater reality of their soul and not know about it? To achieve it you'd have to know but to be dressed by it, yeah you could not know. Means that as soon as you come into the contact of these shaykhs and the dress of that reality is dressing upon that servant, dressing, dressing, dressing. If they don't open their meditation, their contemplation and their practices they won't see the extent or feel the extent of that dress. And they may come to them, oh I've been all these years and nothing happened. No, no many things happened, just you didn't want to sit to, to achieve it. The ingredients have all been put into your pot but you didn't bake it and make it into anything but the ingredients are there. So but to achieve like the opening of everything and not know it, no, they know it. They know if their light is coming, they feel the light, there's, a, there's an event on iman. Anyone who thinks they have iman, they have to have achieved a specific event in which they felt the light come to them, they reached and, and saw that light enter into them and as a result Allah extraordinarily illuminated their being and that's a station of faith. That's not that, oh I have faith, of course I've been in this for so many years, that's not faith, that's you think you have faith but faith is an actual event of light and energy and said so those who meditate and contemplate they're heated, their hands and neck and body get very heated because they're energy beings. 
So it's like in these sci-fi movies where they just all of a sudden explode and turn into fire because they don't know how to control their heat and their energy. And that's fully not open. When Allah really wants to open that reality when these fitnas begin to open on earth, imagine the fire that will come out of them and the energies that will come out of them. So that, that's immense, immense but right now they're just sort of like little kids playing with little bit of energy here and there. But when Allah wants to open then, then the immense amount of energy from heavens which, which has no limit and no understanding in its, in, in its uh, potential inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, why are, why are the mountains so sacred in Damascus? The mountains are sacred in Damascus? A mountain everywhere are, are sacred, many, many realities, many caves, many homes of awliya upon them and that the, the mountain are great stabilizers and they represent the awtat. That the, the mountains are symbolic of, of the reality of the souls of, of a category of awliya who stabilize the earth by their presence. And if, if they leave the earth and Allah lifts those awtat then the earth is in, in a flux, means the volcanoes go off, everything upside down because the nature of the earth is in continuous convulsion. By their presence they're stabilizers and that's the, the hadith on Ahlul Bayt and the, the description by means of them Allah sends rain, by means of them Allah sends greenness and blessings. Means that that Muhammadan light it stabilizes and brings peace and, and tranquility. So as a result their souls are like pegs, Jabalan awtada. I think we recite in, in I think Surat Al-Naba or Surat Al-Mulk with the mountain, the, the mountains are the pegs and that's a symbol and a reality for awliyaullah that Allah made them. So many associations are in the mountains, many spiritual association of awliyaullah are held high onto the mountains away from people in which the, the jinn, the ints, the, the angels are all gathered in those associations and for their barakah and blessings of that region inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa How do ancient… Are you checking on TikTok also? Is there yeah. TikTok audiences on? Yeah. InshaAllah. Yeah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa How do ancient advanced civilization tie back to Islam? Nowadays many ancient structures are found which have unfathomable scientific basis and strong universal energy connection. Mm. We're just watching a show before the zikr. Remember the basis of everything and the basis of disinformation is that you're baboon and now you're smart. So shaitan's philosophy is that you people, because he doesn't like Bani Adam, were monkeys and now you're a little bit smart. If you keep that's the foundation, that's tenure, that's how you progress in universities, that's how you become professors, you have to sign that agreement. If you teach anything other than that, you don't have access to the professors to tenure, tenure is like to, to achieve like a seniority. Nothing. So when that's the foundation of education that you're a monkey and that you're now a little bit intelligent then you lied about everything. And that's the problem is that this is and that's why we say dajjal these are this these are deceit and this this deceit is unbelievable. We said that Nabi Musa was black, why didn't they say he's black? He's and Prophet described he was black dark, not light and, and the, like a milk chocolate, like dark chocolate, dark. Why don't they want people to know that? Right? Sayyidina Sulaiman was dark. So it means that there's a history, they're not teaching people. Why? It's interesting for them. The globe is not the way they have it. Mecca is on top, they're on below the equator. They didn't go to the moon, they didn't do these things. So then now you see why Islam is the only religion 
because there was no manipulation, there was no lies that Prophet will give them these lies until one day they grow up and it's necessary for them to raise your children. Don't raise your children on lies, don't feed them lies otherwise they grow up to be liars. Islam comes and says, teach them the truth. So all of Islam is a truth and when we come into these areas they come and say, no it's okay give your children some lies, it's okay it's a festival. But we're not supposed to be fed lies. If you feed somebody a lie they'll become a liar. If you feed them the truth they keep with the truth. So we don't do these things that we're all pagan, we're all demonic, we're all symbolic of a, of a very bad energy and every bad uh, thing that imaginable. So these were the… this is the, how the light of Islam shines so bright now. And people are wondering, why didn't this religion have these things? Well, because we didn't put any lies into it. We didn't need to lie to people and, and assimilate with everyone. Prophet said, don't make a bid'ah, don't assimilate, don't make an innovation in your religion as far as adding new things to the religion. Assimilation and innovation is not praising, you can praise as much as you want, ibadah never becomes bid'ah. If you want to pray extra rakahs there is no bid'ah in ibadah that I want to mention Allah's name a thousand times, oh this, no you, you're supposed to as and you should compete on, on, on drawing as much ibadah as you want. But to innovate and say, no um, Halloween is now part of Islam, that's bid'ah, that when Allah is going to take you and punish you and say that in your holy land, why you did that? You brought in a satanic system into Islamic understanding. So that, that's, that's dangerous, that's the sign of the last days. But to say, I want to praise Allah more, I want to pray 100 rakahs tonight. Allah to command you, all of the, the, the great schools of, of hadith, the imams they prayed thousand rakahs until they got arthritis because they prayed so much. There's no innovation in, in, in worshipping Allah Innovation is when you say, can we start adding our, a bunny rabbit on in April for our, our children to do? No, that's innovation because if enough people do that they'll, they'll say, no yeah every April we're supposed to do that in Islam. No we're not supposed to do that in Islam. Those are deep pagan beliefs and don't bring pagan belief because we keep Islam truth and clean, mubeen. That in a, in a clear register, that's why Allah gave to us SubhanAllah amazing words that this Prophet of ours is mubeen, clear and no crookedness. Means uh, you're not going to be raised on lies and make it to be true. We said before they say, Father, Son and Holy Ghost three is one. When is three is one? Three is three. So they confuse people's minds, if you te teach children three is one, three is one, three is one then they're not going to know math. Because they don't say, I don't understand why one plus one plus one equals three but in your one plus one plus one equals one. So everything, everything is built on the foundation of lies and at the end you have a bunch of liars and that's called dajjal which is deceit. So Islam has to be clear from deception and bring the truth of the heavens inshaAllah. These ancient structures, so that's how we started is we're not for monkeys. So we came from Walaq al Karana Bani Adam. Imagine the power that Sayyidina Adam came with all knowledges onto this earth. Seventy feet high, his foot is six, six feet wide. He walked from mountain top to mountain top. So for Sayyidina Adam salam, he could probably build the pyramid like Legos. No? You take a rock, ding, 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 ding. So maybe it was like a Lego project for Sayyidina Adam and son. He just popped them all together, made that. But they're not telling you. They're saying, no, we came from baboon because they're coming so much against Allah and now that the lie became so big is the point of their collapse. The lie worked, it worked, it worked, it worked until the lies catch up. Where you buried the bodies, now they're all starting to come downstream in the water. But Islam never did that, so as a result Islam is the shining and clean and mubeen. Where they come back and say, no Allah told us, they say, Nadam is 70 feet tall, 
Well, 70 feet, his foot is the size of one of the stones of the pyramids. So if I took a, a, a stone the size of my foot, I could probably build the pyramid by hand. So yeah, so all these monolithic structures were built by very huge beings. So once you understand the truth, their archaeology is all lies, all meant to disinform people that uh, the story of the heavens not to exist. But Islam looks at that and never lied and Islam comes back and says, no Sayyidina was 70 cubits tall. So they built them, Sayyidina Adam either built it, Sayyidina Inuk built it, Sayyidina Nu, Sayyidina Jonah or any of them could have built that with their height and their, their size. And the works of the jinn and the jinn races and all the, the, the jinn powers that were upon this earth, all of what Islam brought answers all of their confusion. And now they call it forbidden archaeology because now they have to rethink these people who don't want to go the line of the monkey and that the people were hunter-gatherers they call them, they were in cavemen, basically say, cavemen you say that the earth was filled with cavemen but we see these huge structures of stone so it means their lie is crumbling. And what zahukan Allah said what? When the truth comes falsehood perishes. Falsehood by its nature zahukan, it has no glue in it. It's enough falsehood comes up it becomes so high in falsehood the mere weight of it shatters into dust to be nothing. Then what they're going to tell people when all their lies failed? What's going to happen is the mass opening of Islam where people say, oh we were lied to, everything was, the, was a crazy lie. And they look and say, Islam never lied, why we don't just go there, inshaAllah. This we cut for tonight inshaAllah, Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al musaleem alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. إلى شرف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وصحبه الكرام ولم الشيخين في تاريخ الفرش بالدية الثمانية خاصة شأن الشيخ محمد عيسى بن خالد سلطان والشيخ عبد الفايز الدافستاني سيدنا الشيخ محمد بن عازم الحقاني مال الشيخ هشام الكبراني الشيخ عدنان الكبراني الشيخ محمد عادل عبد الخالق الخوش الدواني صلى الله عليه سيدنا محمد بن عيسى السلام قول الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام تمس ابوك الصديق سيدنا عمر سيدنا عثمان إمام الحسن عليه السلام إمام الحسين عليه السلام سيداتنا فاطمة عليه السلام وسيد سداتنا Siddiqeen al-Fatiha Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.